Welcome back and so far on the course we've had a very high level look at what Istio is. It's a service mesh and we know that a service mesh is a layer that we can apply to our Kubernetes cluster which is going to intercept all of the traffic inside that cluster. Actually when we go a bit further you'll find that we can actually decide which parts of the system are going to be intercepted and it all works on namespaces but for now at least let's just think of the service mesh as sitting underneath our entire system. So I don't know how you feel about Istio so far, whether it's worth you using it on a project or if it's even worth learning. Um, we kind of picked up that, yeah, we can intercept all of the requests and responses and we can do things like timing and so on. I don't really know how compelling that is to you. And I think perhaps the difficulty with a service mesh is giving a quick definitive answer of what can they do for us. And that's because there are so many benefits and advantages of service meshes. And I sense that over time, we're going to be finding more and more uses for them in the industry. The big features, as I mentioned before, are probably telemetry, traffic management and security. And we will be exploring all of that through this course. But I just thought that rather than plowing through lots of theory, it would be much more fun just to dive straight in. I'm going to show you a scenario which I've built and I've tried to make it as realistic as possible. The kind of problem that we really do encounter when working on complex distributed systems. We're going to use Istio in this section to not only find out the cause of the problem, but we're also going to use Istio to give us at least a temporary solution to the problem as well. Now on this course, where possible, I'm going to make it so that you can use Istio without having to use a potentially expensive cloud provider. Istio will run perfectly happily on AWS and on Google Cloud and really doesn't matter how you're deploying your Kubernetes cluster. I have to warn you though, that if you do want to work locally on your desktop, it is pretty difficult because Istio is big and it's resource hungry. So I've worked really hard in preparing this course to, to try to make it so that the entire course can be run on a mini cube installation that's using four gigabytes of RAM. So you'll probably need something like probably really eight gigabytes of RAM on your computer to be able to comfortably run these exercises. I'm sorry if you don't have that amount of RAM, but whilst practicing for these uh, videos and I have spent months on this, I've had many lockups. I've had to restart Minikube so many times. I hope that won't happen too often to you, but don't be surprised if you do have to keep restarting. So I'm going to work on the assumption that you've already used Minikube before and you have a modern Minikube installed on your desktop. If not, I'm going to give you a link to a video from my Kubernetes course where I go through the steps of installing Minikube. If you do want to do this on a cloud provider, that's going to make support harder for me because I don't work on every cloud platform. Istio is complicated and I strongly recommend that we remove any unnecessary complexities. I do recommend you follow along if you can, but you'll probably get a lot of value if you just want to sit back, put your feet up and enjoy watching the demonstration. Now the files that we need for this exercise, there's actually only four YAML files required and I've numbered them one, two, three, four. You will find those files as part of the downloads for this course in the folder called warm up exercise. If you prefer, I do have a GitHub repository for this course at github.com uh, forward slash Dick Chesterwood forward slash Istio Fleetman. Now what I've got in here is all of the source code that I've used to build every single container that's in this architecture. But I want to be really clear, you do not have to understand any of this code. There will be a few occasions on the course where I drill into a few lines of code, but apart from that, there's no requirement for you to understand this code. On this course, we're purely thinking about managing a cluster rather than implementing the code that's going on to the cluster. Also, let me be really clear about this. In a lot of these projects, I've put bad code in. 
And the bad code is there so that we can find problems and we can use Istio to fix those problems. I don't want anybody to think that this is some kind of an example of a good microservice architecture because it really isn't. There's lots of deliberate problems inside here. So most of this you don't need unless you really do want to take the code apart. But all of the files that we're using on the course you will find in the uh, in this folder here, I've put an underscore on top just so it's at the top of the list, course files, and we're currently wor working on the warm up exercise, and they're the four files that we're going to need. So, assuming you have those files, the first job is to start up Minikube. Just to be absolutely sure that we're working from a clean slate, I recommend that you first do a Minikube delete. When we're starting Minikube, we will definitely need at least four gigabytes of memory. So you will need the dash dash memory 4096 option. There's no way this is going to work on two gigabytes, I'm afraid. And it's even possible that you, if you have RAM available, if you've got more than eight gigabytes of RAM on your machine, then I would recommend that you push this up a little further. 4096 should be just enough. As always, that's going to take ages to start. So I'll rejoin you when my Minikube is up and running. So Minikube's running for me. I hope it's running for you as well. The first thing we're going to do is to install Istio. Now the Istio website recommends that we use Helm to install Istio. And that's absolutely fine, but the problem is if you use the defaults as supplied on the Istio page, it's simply not going to run inside Minikube. I've spent quite a lot of time tweaking and tuning Istio so that it will run on Minikube. It's absolutely not for production standard systems. I've really pushed everything to the limit and I've, I've, I've restricted the amount of CPU and memory that some of the Istio control plane components can use. But I'm hoping that it will be sufficient for the course so that you get a good feel for all of Istio's features. So it's a bit odd this really in that I'm not going to show you how to install Istio just now. We're going to work with this sort of cut down version of Istio that I've prepared for you. And in a later chapter, I will show you exactly how I did this. For now, all you need to know is we have these four YAML files. And the first two, the first three really, are Istio YAML files. And the fourth of them is just the application that we're going to be working on. So I've got several deployments in there, several services and so on. The first job is to get Istio installed and it's a little bit strange. We actually have two files that we have to run one after each other. Uh, this first file is called istio init.yaml. I'll talk about what it is while it's running. If you do a kubectl apply on the on that one istio init.yaml, you'll find it was going to create a set of resources. And the first thing it's done is it's created a namespace called istio system. And you're going to find that all of the istio control plane components so these are all the pods that Istio needs for its features are going to be installed into that namespace. We're going to be working a lot in the Istio system namespace on this course. If I do a kubectl get, uh, get PO uh, on that namespace, uh, dash n Istio system. So I'm just seeing the pods that Istio are running. You're going to find, if you're quick enough, that there are three pods running. Now I'll say if you're quick enough because these pods are actually jobs and I don't know if you know jobs in Kubernetes but these are pods which just run just do a task for a short time and then they complete. So depending on how quick you are if I repeat that command and yeah in the time I've been talking these three pods have indeed now completed. They took about a minute for me. 
Istio is quite odd here. What that was doing was it was creating some custom resource definitions, which are these CRDs. Now, I don't know if you've come across CRDs in Kubernetes. This is something that I didn't even cover in the advanced section of my uh, original Kubernetes course. Custom resource definitions are a mechanism that allows you to extend Kubernetes and to add your own types into Kubernetes. So you'll be well aware that in Kubernetes we can have deployments and pods and services. With a custom resource definition, you on your project can invent your own custom types for Kubernetes. And some frameworks exploit these custom types, these custom resource definitions, and Istio is definitely one of them. And these jobs are adding those custom resource definitions into your cluster. And it's very important that you wait. You've got to give these time to complete before you go on and do steps two, three, and four. The reasons three of them, I think, now I'm not one of the uh, Istio developers, but I think what's happening here is with each new version of Istio, they might release new features and new custom resource definitions, and they do that by adding an extra pod for the newer features. So I think this one was introduced at uh, Istio 1.0. These are the extras that were added in 1.1. Now the Istio that we're working with here is actually Istio 1.3 at the time of recording, but it looks like they just didn't add any new features into 1.3. You can verify this if you're interested with a kubectl get crd, and that should give you a whole list of these custom resources. I'm just wondering if there's any that we can pick up on here. For example, this one here, a virtual service is a specific type that you're going to be using in Istio. You'll be writing a YAML file that defines virtual services, or at least we will a little bit later on. Anyway, assuming that that's in place, we can now safely go on to install the second of the YAML files. Now this YAML file I have built, but I've built using the instructions on the Istio site. You can think of this file as being Istio. Inside there are definitions for all of the components that Istio needs. This is a massive file. I'll just do a line count on that file. There are nearly 20,000 lines of YAML inside there. So it is a terrifyingly complex YAML file that we're about to apply. And it will take quite a long time for everything inside here to apply. So I think we'll just dive in then. Let's do kubectl apply dash F on that second file. And all being well, you should see a great big long list of deployments and services and all kinds of things being created. Now I'll try to work quickly here. If I do a kubectl get PO again on the namespace istio-system, so dash n istio-system, if you've got watch available on your command line, I'm going to do a watch on that so we can see what's happening. Now, what we see here is pretty much the Istio control plane component starting up. So there's quite a few of them, not that many. I think we've got about, what, 10 or 12 entries there. And we're just going to be waiting for all of these to start up. Now, I'll warn you, it's not that easy to see when everything started up because, for example, those three jobs that we did in step one, they're going to stay there forever in the completed state. So we're not just looking for one of one appearing all the way down this list. Also, some of these pods, such as this one here, the Istio pilot, critical component in Istio, but there are two containers inside that pod. So we, we need both of those to be up and running. Now, I can't keep talking because in my experience, this in Minikube, when you're running this in Minikube, this can take maybe 10 minutes before everything is running stably. I just want to say, don't panic if you see some of these pods going into an error state. You might well see some of these pods, especially the ones with two contain containers inside, you might see them go into a crash loop. Now that's just because a lot of these 
pods depend on other pods and depending on the order that they start up sometimes a pod goes into a crash loop so that it can wait for its dependent pods to be up and running ah and just while i was talking brilliant timing there can you see that this policy pod has gone into crash loop back off in fact it's now on three restarts please don't worry about that this is going to take some time so i will now stop recording and i'll come back when and if everything's up and running okay so welcome back and it took about five minutes ish for me for everything to start running stably during rehearsals i've 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 seen that take as as long as 10 minutes so really don't worry depending on the speed of your computer i guess but don't worry if it's taking longer than that for you now one of the difficulties here as i say is it's not immediately obvious that everything's up and running because we've got the we've got quite a few jobs here which are in the completed state so we have a zero of one completed there's quite a few of these post install jobs they kind of do some cleaning up when Istio's up and running. We're just looking, you've really just got to look down the whole of the list and make sure that every pod is either running or completed. And the ones that are running, we want to see all of the containers inside them running. So both containers in pilot and policy, both containers inside telemetry, and the rest of them are just single pods. So assuming that's working for you now, believe it or not, you have Istio installed into your cluster. Remember, I've got a full chapter on how you can generate your own YAML files according to your own custom tastes. That's step two done. Let's move on. The next step is a really simple one. Uh, step three is a file called Kiali secret.yaml. Now Kiali, if I just get that pod list up again and I keep forgetting that I need dash n istio dash system uh, one of the pods is called Kiali now this is going to form a key part of the demo Kiali is a wonderful tool for visualizing your cluster I'll show you it in a short while but in order to use Kiali you do need to set up a username and password and it's in the form of a secret, which I assume you're familiar with from Kubernetes. If not, this is nothing more complicated really than a config file which contains a username and a password. They actually call it a passphrase in Kiali that just so happens to have been run through base64 encoding. So it's not encrypted in any way, it is just an encoding. And uh, I go on a lot about secrets in my Kubernetes course, but really a secret's not a secret it's not encrypted it, it's just to have, in fact you could run this string here and notice i've used the same string for username and passphrase you could run that through any base 64 decoder there's loads of them online i happen to have one installed into my shell so i could echo that string and run it through base 64-d i think that will decode it it's just the string admin that's base64 encoded so don't worry if you don't have base64 yourself you can either do that online or take it from me this is going to set up a username and password of admin admin in Kiali we just need to apply this so kubectl apply dash f step 3 Kiali secret dot yaml and the final step the fourth yaml file is our application that we're going to be working on now, some of you will have been on my previous Kubernetes training course where we used a fleet management system to demonstrate the features of Kubernetes. If you have been on that course, then you will recognize this application because I've decided for consistency to use the same application, although I have pushed it around a lot and I've changed things so that I can demonstrate the features of Istio please don't worry if you've not done my kubernetes course that's absolutely no problem at all you do not need to understand this application in order to work on this course and in fact this is the scenario i'm going to give you just imagine you have just joined this project on day one the project's already up and running but you haven't written any of the code for it your job is going to be to manage the kubernetes cluster so you're at quite a disadvantage really in that you're not really familiar, well, you're not at all familiar with the, with the internal workings of the system. But we have been told 
that there is a fault in the system. And the fault seems to have been introduced by some recent code change. But the problem is the developer who did that code change has gone on holiday. We could go through the Git repository and, and go through all of the commits, but this is a busy project. There are a lot of commits and it's very difficult to see exactly where the break occurred. So that's the background. And in order to install this application, you might think it's just a case of applying the YAML file. But there is actually one further step that we need to make first, and this is an absolutely critical step. So I think I'm going to stop here and I'm going to do the next step in a video on its own. And I'm doing that so we really don't forget to do the next step. So rejoin me in the next video.